uh, this is picnic day uh, as we are inside of the entomology exhibit here uh, it's a very very popular exhibit the line is very long uh, as people enter the room the first person that they see uh, is forensic entomologist Bob Kimson which is sitting here on the microscope and explaining things to uh, to the visitors. Uh, the line is so long that they have to put people in the door and allow only a certain number of people at a time. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, and the, let's see here. Looks like a there. All right, so I think we are back. Uh, uh, and the, the entomology students that are helping here today, they are all wearing uh, beautiful uh, pink t-shirt and I'm going to try to figure out uh, uh, who designed this t-shirt. It, it looks like that Mariel is the one who, who designed this t-shirt. Are you the one who designed this t-shirt? I'm not. That's my so, friend. So, so who's that? Um, the person who designed the t-shirt is Mariel Hanson Friedman. She is in the restaurant right now. Oh, okay. She's coming back. I'll, I'll be back. This is yeah. a beautiful t-shirt. Thank you. Bob, we are live here on Twitter. Uh, we are live here on Twitter. Uh, and what's the most popular question that you get here from the visitors? The most popular question I get. Most common one. What is this all about? Oh. <laughs> Literally, that's so, it. Uh, do they understand the meaning of uh, forensic entomology? Oh, yeah. When they come in, before you... 50-50. Uh, some do oh. uh, and, some, and, and some don't. Um, and I have to explain to them it's all about, you know, using insects found on the seed as evidence in court for a variety of different kinds of uh, things. Like do, you ex do you explain any particular case, a very famous case? Well, yeah, there I was a case that Lim was involved with that, very famous, right? Right, I just talked about that one. I've got several cases that I talk about. It depends on what the question is the person is asking. And uh, I'll just call up a case from my little repertoire and use it as an example. I don't have any one particular case. It seems that the, you have been doing this for quite a long time. Yes, I have. <laughs> so how many years now? Oh, Lordy B. Well, since uh, 1998. 1998, so it's about uh, 26 years. Amazing. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. All right, so as you see here, uh, it's very popular. Uh, the room is completely lot of people. I'm going to try to negotiate here to see if I can reach out to the uh, medical entomology exhibit that's on the back there. Uh, for the first Let's see this. I hope I get a good view there. So let me negotiate my, my space here. So, all right, kissing by. It looks like that we are here at the uh, medical entomology session, and I see that CC is here. She's a graduate student from Texas, and she's uh, in Jeff Atado's lab. I'm going to wait a little bit here to see if I can get CC to explain to us a little bit about. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. 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 Can you hold the microphone for me? Sure. I have a couple of questions. Of course. So uh, it's wonderful to have so many people in the yes. entomology. Yeah, it's I crazy. know. The, the line is going way <laughs> down. Oh, I haven't been out, so that's great to hear. It's amazing. So what are you explaining to people here today? Yeah, so I know Sakyolo is outside already, so I don't want to give them the same spiel. So I'm just talking about medical entomology and things that are important. So I'm talking about houseflies. People don't think about them being medical importance because of the vertical transmission. So, um, you know, sometimes here they might, Davis, they might go to horse or cow dung, and then they go to your trash, then they'll go to your food. So they might transmit like E. coli or cholera. So, you know, it's important, you know, to have food covers and just make sure you're aware of this. Um, also, I'm talking about ticks. So these are actually some ticks I collected last month here in Northern California. So, um, you know, Exodia specificus is a big vector of ticks here. Uh, and the ticks have become so important. Yes, they're important, point, right? yes. So I'm just showing people, uh, people may not realize, because we show pictures up close, that people may not realize how small ticks are actually are. I'm talking about how it's important to take, you know, hot showers. And if you do find a tick at yourself, there are wonderful um, labs that will do pathogen testing that, you know, it's easier sometimes to detect if a tick has a pathogen than it is the humans. And of course, you know, my favorite mosquitoes. Yeah, um, yeah, you yeah. Cannot forget about I cannot forget about the mosquitoes. Right? So I'm talking to people, the different of the male mosquito right here and the female um you know jeff he is really interested in photography and um you know able to showcase that they're actually quite pretty up close but also um how small and like um you know hard to see the larvae and eggs so i have some first instar larvae and eggs here and how um it may not be easy to detect it in standing water so it's super important to you know dump all standing water you may have in your backyard and um you know in your patio and then also you know we're talking about other stuff like chagas disease um black flies bed bugs fleas you know medical entomology is such a big array of different insects of medical and arachnids i guess with ticks of medical importance that um, most people are unaware and a lot of people have been telling me that they are learning new things they never heard before so i'm glad to be able to talk to them about it yeah so that's a very good service for the science entomology and to the public in general yeah. thank you very much yeah, of course thank you all right so this is the the entomology session here uh, right, but now a slow internet connection, so let's wait a little bit here to make sure that. Is... All right. Uh, okay, we are here uh, in the entomology exhibit. This is the picnic day at this Davis. We try to get there for plucking and negotiate behind you here. Thank you. Uh, Andy. This is the go ahead. This is the, the room where entomology holds seminars normally. Uh, so we're trying to reconnect it here. All right, so let's see. Are you Mariel? Are you Mariel? I'm Mariel, yeah. This is just one second. We're trying to get the connect. All right, so this is the person who designed this. Can you hold the microphone yeah. for me? I'm Walter Leo. I was with entomology. I love the entomology anyway. But this is a beautiful t-shirt to you, the one who designed that, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I was inspired by the Barbie craze from last year. Um, and this moth is actually a really beautiful moth that's pink and yellow, which I also thought was very suiting for the, the Barbie theme. Um, so, yeah, very excited to design and, it. And it's a very crowded, full house today. That's wonderful for yeah. you, right? Yeah, Lots we love people. doing outreach and are so happy that so many people are so excited about interacting with insects. And um, this is actually a new exhibit that we have this year with uh, insects that glow under UV light. Um, and next weekend, we're actually doing an event um, in the Arboretum where we're going to go out and look for uh, insects and flowers that might glow under UV light. 
So besides this public service for the science of entomology, what do you do for entomology in your own research? Um, so I'm in Emily Meineke's lab and I study plant insect interactions and I am particularly interested in light pollution and how that is affecting uh, the interactions between plants and insects. So yeah. Oh, and what year in the program? Uh, I'm a second year. Second year. Yeah. So still a couple of years to go. Yes. All right. Yes. Good luck with yeah. that. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. All right. So as you see here, this is the uh, the entomology uh, exhibit here at the picnic day. So we're talking to Bob King. So I'm going to go outside and just give you an idea of the line. Uh, how long is the line here? Uh, wait for the, the entomology uh, exhibit. You see here, all the way down there. And the, this is Briggs Hall. And here's all the line for entomology. It's amazing. It's an amazing line for the entomology here. All right, so this is the uh, picnic day uh, from UC Davis. Uh, again, this is Briggs Hall, and that's where the Department of Entomology is housed. Uh, some other departments, including my own department of the NC. We'll be back soon. We are live here from uh, UC Davis, picnic day in front of the entomology building. Oh. Uh, we are live again from UC Davis on Twitter in front of the Briggs Hall. So this is a big crowd here, uh, as you see, people coming from everywhere on campus, and a large crowd come here to the uh, entomology exhibits, the cockroach race, and the many other activities. There is a band that starts now playing. Going to walk in here. Uh, there is a booth here from the uh, Sakiolo district. They are explaining to people the importance of mosquitoes and how to keep them away from you. Can you do an ex little explanation on oh, the microphone? Hey, okay. <laughs> so, what surprises people the most when they come here to the Sakiolo? Sorry, uh, what? what what surprised people the most when you show them on the exhibit well, here? This usually surprised people a lot. So this is all the mosquitoes that we got last year, right? So we have um, about 26 different species of mosquitoes in Northern California. Two of them transmit West Nile, which is the main disease of concern here. All the other ones that we get, we usually put them in here. And this usually surprises people just by the amount of mosquitoes that we get, right? And uh, also, you know, the mosquito fish is something that they like a lot. Um, right. You know, we use them as a control tool. Yeah. Um, and also our insects, all the beneficials. So 
a good service here is to educate people about the uh, standing water, right? That's a big problem. And this year, a lot of rain, so that should be a problem. Also, yeah. people don't take care of that. Right? So one of our yeah, go ahead. One of our goals is to um, show people the different kinds of mosquitoes that we have and what they can do to prevent mosquitoes, right? So one of those things, like you mentioned, is standing water. Make sure you get rid of that water so mosquitoes can breed there. And they, they need to understand that the, any amount of water is important for mosquitoes. Even a little bit of a, a, a can or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we have different things that mosquitoes can breed on. Right. Even something as small as a bottle cap, right? Right. It's enough to yeah, breed mosquitoes. Enough water there for mosquitoes, right? Exactly. <laughs> Particularly some of the invasive species, like it is a dip dye, wow. it is albopictus. Are we finding albopictus here in the region? We are. Last year we found it in northern Sacramento area. We found it is albopictus. So we are thinking that we'll probably see it more and more uh, this year and as time goes by. It's very important to keep them away because we don't have the, the virus like dengue and so on in here, but we have the vector. If someone brings the virus, then there's a bad combination, right? So we don't have dengue and chica or chikungunya here in the county. Right. But last year we had a local transmission of dengue in Southern California, right? So we're starting to see more and more those diseases appear. Um, in our state, so it's definitely of concern. So can you tell your name before you give me the microphone? My name is um, Mario. I'm the biologist for the Sacramento Yolo Mosquito and Vector Control District. Thank you, Mario. All right, thank you. Appreciate that very much. Entomologist, we've got a very, uh, lots of people here. I'm going to show you the line for entomology. Uh, all right, so it's reconnecting now. This is the cockroach that gets lots of people, lots of attention here too. And the, the line for entomology exhibit is very long. So this is the cockroach. I'll, I'll come back here to, to the cockroach race. Uh, but I wanted to go from behind here so that to give you an idea what the line we already, we already talk about the, the exhibit there, but here's the line. Here's the line of people to get to the entomology exhibit. It goes all the way from here. As you see, it's a really long line. We're lucky to have so much. Uh, public interest in entomology as indicated here by these long lines and they match here the long line matches with the other interests in the cockroach race so let's see if we can pick the cockroach race here uh, it's going to be difficult to negotiate to negotiate that you have Close a look at the cockroach race here. Let's see what we. Uh, okay. Let's see what we get here. So that's the cockroach race and the uh, lots of other exhibitions of entomology that we already uh, show you in the other segment. And this passive midday, uh, almost one o'clock, 12.55, the crowd is enormous around uh, on campus. It's estimated that today we had the, Maybe more than 70,000 people coming to campus. Between classes, this campus gets very busy, but not anywhere near what we're seeing today here. Uh, perhaps today is one of the busiest days on campus 
Uh, of course, beginning day is always a busy day, but this time it looks like we have a larger attendance than any other year. Uh, the weather is very good, everything is working in favor, uh, and we have a great number of visitors here on campus. So probably uh, it's going to be one of the largest uh, picnic days uh, in the history of the campus. Glad that everything going okay. Uh, on my right side here. On my right side here, that the Catherine Sal Building, Science Building, uh, Entomology is there on the left, the Briggs Hall, where we show a uh, lot of activity going on there in many other places on campus. So that's picnic day uh, for UC Davis. <laughs>